You are here on the Come Up Show. We are back. One of your hosts, Chris Robinson. Flex Rondo in the building. Bow, what's going on, y'all? Twitter CEO, you already know the vibes. We in the building. We got a special guest with us, my man. The one and only. We on tour. He, he looking at me like, he don't say we on tour. <laughs> man, he don't so, say we on tour. <laughs> nah, he got so many damn titles because he's just so known. Shit don't make no sense. Fluff Jones. Jones. Fluff Jones, the one and the only. only. The one and only. The only one in America, baby. Most oh, you gotta say that shit right, baby. Mm-hmm. The, the, only one, the only the one, only one, in, one America. in America, baby. That's we out here. We that's on tour. The only one in America. Of course, so do you know you that know, shit? You been running. I, so I'm, I'm still new and getting into the, the industry and everything. You've been running around right. for a long time. Um, I want right. to know, you know, where you started from, where you grew up, what inspired you, things like that. Just basically, you know, what I man. I grew up in Bushwick in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Just like a lot of other people, you know what I mean? I saw the grind. It was there. It was open opportunities. And um, I took advantage of them. You know what I'm saying? How was it growing up out there in Brooklyn? Like? Uh, I Get into up, it. <laughs> up, nah, you know, I grew up in a shitty era, man. My shit was different, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, it's a little more easier. It's a little more at ease. I get to breathe easy. Before, you know, it was a little more dangerous, rugged. Niggas was getting to it people was just you know they was in they they wasn't focused you know it wasn't like now like right, you know right. what I mean? like computer woke a lot of people up you know what i mean we didn't really have that back then you know what I'm like it was a lot different you know definitely definitely i don't know why i thought you were from the bronx <laughs> A lot of people wow. think I'm. A lot of people think I'm from the Bronx. Yeah, I thought you were from the Bronx. <laughs> Everybody think I'm from the Bronx. Everybody think I'm from the Bronx or Harlem. Yeah, I didn't think Brooklyn. I, I ain't yeah, gonna hold right. I didn't, I didn't think Brooklyn. Think that. Nah, not at all, bro. Yeah, I didn't nah. think Brooklyn at all. Nah, nah. A lot of people. A lot of people didn't know that I grew up in Bushwick. I grew up in Trump in the Knickerbocker. Basically, um, like I grew up basically in an era where you know what I'm saying niggas was getting to it. You know, my block was like the first block that had a precinct on the block. My block was like the first block that actually, um, they built a precinct on the block. Um, my block was like the first block that had cameras in it. Like, everywhere in New York was bad. Everybody could talk about their neighborhoods. Everybody could talk about this, that, and the third. But my block was like the mecca for slinging dope. So, like, I grew up in that era of just getting to the bag, you know. And my mama loved she got to the bag. Yeah. You know oh, saying? so no, it so came from your mama. Yeah, the hustle came, came from the mama. mama. All right, came from my mama. My mama did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, she taught me a lot as a woman. You know what I mean? I grew up underneath her shadow. You know what I mean? Like, she basically was a hustler. And um, back when I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, I looked up to her, and I saw a lot of people did that, too. And when I got into the music game, a lot of the people that um, basically wanted out of the drug game and they moved on and they didn't really want none of the back lashes, they moved into the music industry. Right. So when they moved into the music industry, a lot of the ones that survived through the music industry, I ended up bumping into and um, using them as stepping stools to like get my weight up and shit. You know what I mean? Like they they would woke up to me, oh hey, you such and such son. I'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, oh yeah, I love your mom. I'd be like, I right, bet what you do. And then that person would come and explain to me, yo, listen, I do this and this and this and this. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, oh shit. I need you one day. Were, so you soaked all of that up at an early age, basically. Yeah, Your I got that shit right. OG. Yeah, yeah, my mama <laughs> love. My mama loves her OG, man. She kept it cool. She did her thing, you know what I'm saying? Always worked, always hustled, always kept us, you know what I'm saying? On some cute shit. Now, what was, um, what was it like going to school at that time? What were you like See, school? going to school, when I went to school, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really have, like, too many problems. I did because I was like considered black, but I was like considered Spanish because I speak Spanish. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think I'm I'm directly African American. Oh, you speak Spanish? Fluent, fluent, and all that. Sing songs, all that. You know what I'm saying? My reggaeton skills is up. Yeah. Yo, I damn, I didn't even think that. I wouldn't thought that at all. Nah, nah, nah. A lot of people. Spanish? He, yo, I'm learning a lot right I now. I knew you were Spanish. <laughs> you can't tell he's Spanish? I, I mean, I, I couldn't call it. I ain't going to hold you. I knew nah. he's mixed. Nah, I, say I that. can tell he's Spanish. Nah, a lot of people didn't know I was Spanish. A lot of people didn't know I was Spanish. Dancing a lot of people didn't know all that. I can't see it. A lot of people yeah. know Spanish. Nah, I can't. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's how I blend in in everybody's lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, I blend in real good because, you know what I'm saying? I know how to be me, but I know how to speak Spanish and be about my culture. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And your neighborhood, like growing up as a kid, did you where did you fit? Did you fit in with everyone? Did you go through problems growing up like that? Because nah, I know, you know sometimes you go through that where people, you know what I mean? They they'll put you off. Oh, nah, he's not this or he's not that. Nah, you go through problems everywhere, man. Like everybody's school, everybody's childhood, everybody's situation is like a similar boat but i was like a little more fortunate enough not to go through a lot because my block protected me you know what i'm saying like i was like a golden child to them and shit like that so when i start like uh getting a little older and like my mom's people's grew a little older you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and the people that worked underneath her like basically just gave me like shining light like yo bro you, you a young man you your mom's shadow like don't make it look bad so That's I took right. that into consideration and was like, nah, fuck that. I'll go get to it. That's real. That's definitely real. Yo, Rondo, you booked the man. I'm waiting for you to talk. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> nah, y'all was, was talking. Yeah, everybody I get to get to know who the one and only is. You feel me? Thank you. What um, you said growing up, what, what type of music you listen to? See, I was into like uh, my mom. She like gave us like vi uh, like a little bit of everything because she would listen to like you know like uh, Barbara Streisand. She would listen to like you know Lisa Lisa and Freestyle Era. You know what I mean? I grew up in between like a lot of Spanish music. You know what I mean? Jerry Rivera. You know like a lot of people who had like um, big influences in the Spanish and English market. Cause actually not for nothing, my mom's really liked a lot about Molly. Mm. Like, that was her shit, you know what I mean? She was, like, a real reggae influence. She liked it basically. Um, my grandfather used to play in a band in the front of the house. They used to have, like, um, their friends come over and have, like, all the instruments and play them out in front of the house and build, like, a whole, like, block Stage. party. Okay. <laughs> Take over the whole block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was influenced like that. So then you're grow you growing up in your neighborhood, you, you was around everyone, you got to yeah. pretty much know everybody. Yeah. You kinda had like um who like it, fifty, like fifty, you know what I mean? His mom's his whole block because his mom's everybody on his block knew him. He was you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's 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 definitely dope, you know what I mean? Nah, um, anybody knew who I was because I was a little bad boy who traveled. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real story. That's where, yeah. listen, listen. That's that where the wheel tour comes that's from. That's where the wheel tour. <laughs> From barrel to <laughs> barrel. Yeah, so like when I was younger, when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? I um I traveled a lot, you know what I'm saying? 1995 was my um first charge ever. You know what I'm saying? I was in uh Manali Park in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? And um uh, a friend of mine's and me, we went up there, whatever, whatever. And we had got caught with a pistol and a couple of knives and shit for like a robbery. Um, we ain't even we ain't even do it, bro. But anyways, we still held it down like men, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, that was like uh, the Yankees were playing the Seattle Mariners that day. Wow. The cop was telling my mom, he was like, "Yo, listen, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was about to shoot your son." Hurt mm. <laughs> too, cause we <laughs> we was gone. <laughs> we took off on him. We took <laughs> off on him. We was in rollerblades. Rollerblades was big at the time. What? Yeah. Rolling. Yeah. Imagine getting stopped by the cops in road braids. Me, I would have been. Uh, nah, you should see him. You on the back of the hey. bus, on the back of the truck. I would have took them off. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. and you quicker with them on. Yeah, you out with the skates. Yo, listen, you now, gone. When you, on, when, when you with the skates on, you, yeah, you But I don't moves. know how to roller skate. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you would have been one falling. Nah, yeah, nah, we maybe if they were, we no, maybe if this. they were Haley's. Y'all remember Haley's? Yeah, Haley's. If they were Haley's, I would have been Haley's, yo. See, that's going viral. That's where you go with Haley's. one curve. <laughs> She's going viral with that one. Yeah, oh, should've, should've definitely fell. That was the been closest over. I knew how to ride, like anything on my feet, like, <laughs> oh, yeah? like roller, yeah, like skateboard. You ain't never, never rode a bike. You don't know how to ride. No, a bike. I know how to ride a bike. <laughs> nah, but let me don't. tell y'all the story about how I learned how to ride a two wheeler. No one taught me, right? All right. So we was we was at the playground, right? And it was like I grew up in projects, like um, All right. like I used to live with my grandmother in the projects. So okay, it was this bike. That was like, it was broke, but it was it was more with a training wheel, right? <laughs> so I wanted a bike so bad. I was like, yo, like I want to learn how to ride a bike. It was the bike with the training wheel, so we All took right. the bike, <laughs> and the training wheel was like lifted up, so it was basically like I was riding on two wheels. You was riding on two wheels. It was basically like I was riding on two wheels, but it was just one. Yeah. So it's like balancing out, and that's how I learned how to ride a two wheeler because I was. 
I kept falling, but I was like learning how to balance out on the training wheel bike because mm. the um, last four wheels wasn't working. So that's how I learned <laughs> some that's real some ghetto <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. That's some real ghetto shit, but that's how I learned, and I'm really good on the yeah. two wheeler now. Like, <laughs> Tootie be outside popping willies, me. Tootie, 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 so what influenced Judy's you to get into, um, into the music side? What, what got you to start going into the music world? What it was was when I was younger, um, basically, like, everybody around me was like, um, they was getting money people, so they wanted to buy and invest in music. They didn't want to be, like, rappers. So, like, the people that I came across first were people that wanted to buy into it. Mm-hmm. Not really people that was into it, like on some, I'm going to be a rapper, I'm going to be a producer, I'm going to be, you know, uh, say like, uh, you know what I'm saying, a singer. Like nobody was taking those approaches. Like I wasn't really hearing that. I was hearing like around me, like, yo, I'm about to invest into this artist. So um, my godfather started a company back in the days, became famous in the Spanish reggae world. Really? Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah, so was- it like... um. The artists that he had underneath him was like uh, Del Calderon, Daddy Yankee, Nicky Jam, a um, couple of other people too, you know what I'm saying? That was really, there was a guy named Speedy, there was uh, Guanavanas, there was a lot of there was a lot of groups in Spanish reggae that were making moves, and um, he was in control of their lives nice. in the sense of like, uh, he'll walk up to them and tell them, yo, listen, um, how much money you got in your pocket? They'll be like, yo, listen, I ain't really got shit. I'm broke. I'm tapped out. He'll be like, all right, here's $500. Make me a song. Mm. So he'll take those songs and take them to the radios and just start promoting them as his own. And then uh, he'll rake in all the excessives. And when I saw him do that, that was like a Diddy move. You <laughs> were. I was so afraid that's to why say I, that. <laughs> that's why you don't see, like, Daryl Galerong and Daddy Yankee and Nicky Jam play the, the, like, the beginning of their careers and shit like that, their songs. Like, you know wow. how people you know how people go back into their first yeah. singles and the shit that make them pop and things like right. that. None of them. Like None they, of them. they they don't do that because the stuff like mm-hmm. this, those um numbers and those and everything there belongs to my godfather. So it like it like went to, it went through the roof. So I trained a little bit of that. Then he was mostly on the road. So I ended up like growing up a little more and more and during time I started rapping. So when I started rapping, I ended up in I was up. waiting for that to come. I said, yo, mm-hmm. I know Fluff rapped somewhere, yo. I knew nah, it. I, I knew did. It was I did, bro. I did. I did. And I'm really good at it. And I stopped because basically that's just not my passion. My passion became being like in the managerial situation where I could plug shit in and make me a nice fortune of dollar. Right. Like I had to learn that, like um, just working with managers, not being the manager. Being the manager was something that I sought out when I first started. I thought that I wanted to be managers to everybody, but I learned that the percentage you get is really weak. Because mm-hmm. if your artist gets $100,000 and you only get 10000 out of that, he goes into a store, he buys just a sweater and a pair of shoes, and that's 20000 and you try to buy the same thing, you can't. can't even afford it. You know what I mean? So, you know, if somebody who wants to put themselves in that shoes, it's like really hard for them to like outgrow that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, that's why I started We All Tour, you know what I mean? Like that's why I started that, cause uh, I just wanted to do shows. I met up with a man named Adam Torres. Mm-hmm. Adam Torres was the biggest promoter in the world right now. Biggest promoter in the world. Madison Square Garden, Barclays Center, um, Amphitheater, you know what I'm saying? You talking about- All the spot top. The Apollo Theater, you talking about everything from Dipset Reunion to the, mm. basically the Locks Reunion, um, Rough Riders Tour, he done, he's done everything you could think of. And um, he's the owner of the Sofrito Concert. Excuse me. So Just when I saw that he was paying a buggy, 6 9 and everybody a lot of money to be there, and he had over like 40 of the biggest artists, I just, I just like, I was, like, damn, how much money is he really getting? Mm-hmm. If he able to pay all of them. There you go. Getting some That's real bread on the back end. You know what I mean? So that that was like a little journey, like process that I took. Well, what was your first journey into the music? Like who was the first, uh, I guess, artist you helped develop or 
because you you already had the connections because of the past and your mother. So with that, like I use those connections. I use all those connections with six nine. Like what I did was um, I had came into the situation where um, a lot of my bros, they was like, "Yo, come out!" You know, everybody, we're gonna need your help. So like when in that situation kicked off, I was like, "All right, cool." You know, like I'm I'm down. I'm down to help out. Like that's cool. We're all gonna make money together as a group. So when we had went to Miami and I seen that we still wasn't getting no money and there was show money coming in, I was like, damn, how much money are they getting for the show? Because mm. I want to know, not because I want in on it, but I want in on it. Right. I want to either get somebody to book the show so and then I could be able to make some money off of it or if not, I was going to book the show myself because I was learning and still in the learning process. So how did you end up hooking up actually with him with Six Nine? Uh, I had knew him like uh, from like my neighborhood and shit like that from time to time, bumping into him and stuff like that. It really wasn't like you know what I'm saying. It really wasn't like my friend, my friend. But he was like somebody that I would take his money. I would play handball with him and whoop him out, get his money, get him out of the court. You know what I mean? And then um, him and his back. friends, yeah, yeah, him and his friends, they were all like Mexicans. They'll come over to the park and they'll praise me. Because everywhere I stand, you know, people knew who I was. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So with oh, that, he was Mexican, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Four hundred percent. Nah, nah, but he repped more the Mexican side than the Puerto Rican side because uh, uh, he was like hang out with like the uh, Mexican kids, and then um, at that time, the Mexican kids was getting bullied by some okay. crip kids that he ended up hanging out with. At the time, so that's right. I he was around. running with the, the Crips. I yeah, yeah, yeah. He made the Mexican kids get bullied by the Crip kids because um, he was like, he's like, nah, fuck that. These Mexican niggas hating on me because he was doing like, you know, like little things that would irk each other. You know, mm -hmm. like trying to rap to another nigga girl type shit wow. behind his back. You know, things like that. So th they would build their their problems, and then he took the next step and started like uh, fucking with the kids that was Crip, and used them to like jump on top of the Mexican kids. Yeah. Yo, that kid story is crazy. <laughs> that nah, shit, nah, 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 that shit long. That shit long, man. No, nah, that shit long. That is different. That so is that different. Shit long. Were you someone that was uh, behind that push for him at that time? Getting I did everything. There? I did basically everything. Like uh, what it was was his management. His name is Chris. His manager. His name is Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Chris came and turned around and um. <clears throat> He re, he uh he saw potential in me when we were hanging out, and he was like, "Yo, uh, what's up? What you want to do?" So I'm like, "Yo, listen, you know, I want to get my artists on, cause uh, Chris gave an opportunity to me, Shadi, and uh, a couple of other fellas to be around, and uh, Chris was like, "Yo, listen, uh, what y'all want to do?" Shadi was supposed to deal with the Pop Out Boys. I was supposed to deal with Fleet Calvo, Paper Chase, and a couple of other artists that I had at the time. And uh, he came and turned around and said, yo, listen, um, I want to give you an opportunity. And um, I said, I can't take it right now because I don't know what to do. And I was being honest, you know what I mean? He just yeah. knew he knew I was connected, you know what I mean? So he, he seen everybody giving me five, everybody hugging me, big embraces. So he was like, damn, how you know all these people? So I was like, you know, that's from my mama love days, you know what I mean? Like, my mama love is these people's peoples, you know what, right. what I'm saying? So... He was like, oh, okay, well, I want to give you a job. And we went to Miami, and uh, we all came, and uh, we wasted, like, mad money out there, like, mad money. And we came back, and I'm like, damn, we did all these shows, but all of us are really tapped out. How are we going to get to it? Like, they was like, yo, listen, nah, I don't know how you going to get to it, but I'm just here just to chill. Like, I'm like, nah, I'm not here to chill. Right. I got kids. <laughs> like, I got to think like about that. all these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to really think about my kids. Like, I had to think about my opportunity with my kids. Mm -hmm. So when I came, turned around, and I thought about it, I said, you know what? I can't be the next man and just hang out with him all day. I need to do business. So when I looked at it and I asked Chris, I said, look, Chris, I don't want to be a hangout buddy. I don't want to be a... Uh, I don't want to be a, a hype man. I don't want to be none of that. I just I want to do management. Can you teach me? He said, nah, you got it in you. You just gotta know how to roll. All you gotta do is not lie to me. You can say what you want to anybody in the world, 
I got your back. That's real. Say like yeah. that. That was your 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 My introduction. Into much. into the music. No, that's what's yeah. That was basically it. That was really it to the music because at that time, don't get me wrong, I already had connections with like DJ Clue a little earlier. Mm -hmm. I was around the whole Desert Storm situation. Um, you know why I ain't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Some tea was about to come out. Yeah. Uh, we gonna, we going to stop for a song and then we're going to get back to where you at now and where you going. All right. To the top, I'm finna breeze On these fake ass niggas who ain't never do shit for me You say you love me, but you <laughs> I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping, girl, but you ain't mine Had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true, girl, you ain't mine I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping, girl, but you ain't mine Had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true, girl, you ain't mine I ain't gon' lie, you had me fucked up Compromise what we had, you really fucked up We were supposed to be forever You let what we had fall apart When I think about it, you fucked up You left me cold and went missing I wanted better for us, you thought I was tripping I still think about you, girl, I'm reminiscing What we had was special and I can't even pretend it Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Can we get back to the basics? When you was all in my bed getting naked Ass self face down while you take dick Hope you never find another nigga to replace this damn and I mean that shit I'm so heartbroken, I really mean that shit Fucking with some other nigga, can't believe that shit I thought you was different, but you ain't different And I mean that shit, yeah I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping, girl, but you ain't mine Had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true, girl, you ain't mine I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping, girl, but you ain't mine had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true, girl, you ain't mine This the last time I let a bitch play me This the last time before I go crazy This the last time I call a girl my baby Breaking hearts daily, bitches be moving shady I ain't mean to do it, but she did that shit to me Now I'm moving reckless and acting like I'm a G Flexing on these bitches, I know it's hard to believe But if that shit happened to you, you would end up moving like me I'm a different type of breed You will never meet another lit nigga like me I'm heading to the top, I'm finna breeze on these fake ass niggas who ain't never do shit for me You say you love me but you lie You said it while looking right in my eyes When it came to you and I There was nothing that I wouldn't do You was my ride or die I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping girl but you ain't mine Had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true girl you ain't mine I be tripping off of what ain't mine I was tripping girl but you ain't mine had me confused, nothing left to do Never thought it was true, girl, you ain't mine hey, uh. Been gone for a little while Been gone for a little while Nah, no, nah no. That you fucking a women Alright, we back Yeah, he, yo, what the fuck we man, we ain't going. Bow, we <laughs> back. That was Frank Ain't Mine. That's Frank Ain't Mine on all platforms. Shout out to Frank. That's Shit. a fact. All right, so we still here with the one and only Fluff, Fluff Jones. The only one in America. In America. So you was you got introduced through Chris with with Six Nine. You yeah. helped push them. Yeah. You seen it wasn't it was a waste of time. Now, you leave that situation to yeah. go where? What What was your next steps? What, uh, how did you figure out, like, you, you know you had to get to the bag. So what was your next step? My next step was uh, paying attention basically to the promoter that I met during the 6 9 situation. When I met the promoter and I saw that he had only, like, about, and a lot of people were looking to have hundreds of thousands of fans, I mean, of um, 
followers on Instagram. When I saw that he didn't have not even two thousand, I was in shock. Okay, he the one that pinned everything together. That's what I'm saying. And he has, and he literally has like about two thousand followers. So he ended up showing me like, yo, listen, you don't need to be that up front. You can be behind the scenes and actually make more happen. And people will be more proud of you, they'll pat you on the back. So I took his format of him doing it with a lot of stars and I made my younger stars. So I made a star list of like basically all the young up and coming artists that were like up and coming, like we're actually shooting for the stars. And I will um, reach out to them and say, you know what? If the, if the world doesn't feel you a star, I'm going to make you a star. You're going to be believed right here on this show. And they just kept on believing in me. And they knew that I had like formality to like put people in rooms to make them better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you said a show. So <laughs> what was the name? What was the name of the show? What made you want to start doing shows? Like how how did that all come apart? I basically like I told you, I met a man named Adam Torres mm-hmm. and um Adam Torres turned around and told me showed me like he was paying for so many artists to be on one bill. So I said, damn, if you're paying out almost two million dollars, how much are you making back? Facts. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. <coughs> Love, no corona, no corona. Nah, no corona, no corona. <laughs> so once I seen, once I seen he, um, once I seen that he was uh putting together all these artists and he was just uh spending so much money, and I said, damn, to make one of these shows to be like about eight million dollars, five million dollars, because you got to do insurance on the property, you got to do, you know what I mean? You got to have food, vendors, you know, workers, stage. Police. Built. Facts. <coughs> can we get him some water, please? Some water. <laughs> Matt, you got water? Oh, shoot. We don't got no water. They got water in the vending machine? Mm-hmm. Yo. Uh-huh. Need water After that second one, it's like, all right, yo, we need some water, B. <laughs> yeah, I don't got no sandwich. No, I don't think I gave you the only catch I had. Well, yeah, so, so you seen his formula and you was like, all right, it's time for me <laughs> to do my own. Yeah. Like I just saw that there was a it was a big value in money. Cuz if I could spend 5,000 and make close to like about 50 to 60,000, a lot of people didn't see that coming. And I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people didn't know a lot of these shows make a lot of money. How was, do you remember your first show and how was the turnout? Not money my wise, first just show, in general. No, <laughs> my first show, my first show my, uh, in general, you know, I started off with the process. It started off slowly, you know. I had enough people to sign up. It was a good day. It was my birthday. So basically, you know, I just used that type of energy to like bring it together where um, people would just come together and just come just to see artists. So, and then uh, I wanted to make my show that way. I, I looked at it that day and said, oh, shit. These artists don't have no fans. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard that? <laughs> <laughs> like, they have no fans. They swear they have fans because they mm-hmm. get likes on Instagram, but they have no fans. Like people who are they cannot sell tickets fact, yeah, like for nothing. Like for nothing, 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 nothing in the world, bro. They can't sell tickets. So what I did was I seen that a lot of people were there for me. So I used that to my advantage. And I said, this is the millennium. I'd rather have people come party with me and come believe that they come in to see me and I'm the main attraction. But I'll have artists there performing so they can actually show their talents to these people. Mm. Makes sense. That's a fact. So everybody, for the most part, was coming coming out for you, yeah. and then with that in turn, you know, so that's used it against it. You know what I mean? So the artist can shine. And that also means that you are definitely making sure that it's good entertainment. That yeah. it's not artists that are not putting out music that's not gonna attend to the people, yeah. no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's very important that because a lot of people do shows and just take money and. Throw anybody on the stage. Yeah, that's is, what I didn't want to do. You yeah, know, like I didn't want to. That. That's why I wanted to. I, I wanted to like make my shit basically based on like your work ethic. Right. 
if I can see that you're actually working, I've bumped into you maybe 20 times. I've saw you on 20 different posts on other people's shit, just, just bigging you up that are bigger than you. Facts. You know what I mean? That are working with you, that are seeing you working and grinding. I turn around and make sure that your grind is re guaranteed rewarded. So y'all heard that. Holla at Fluff Jones, artists that are working and yeah. got a sound. We ain't doing the bullshit over here. You feel me? <laughs> nah, you got to let it be known. And a budget. And nah. a budget. Facts. Facts. <laughs> yeah, please, a budget. Because y'all be coming over talking crazy. Nah, listen, that's another thing. <laughs> nah. A lot of people say they have budgets. And I, I tell them, please do not tell me that. You know why? Because the music industry has the budget, not you. You don't have that budget. You know why? Your shit is not at 100000 200000 Three hundred thousand dollars worth. You can tell me you got ten bands in the in the in the in the vote, mm -hmm. and that shit means nothing to me. If that doesn't mean you got money. That means all you got is just back pay from the government, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so we know what twenty twenty is about. <laughs> yeah, man. Like you know what it is. A lot of people they they tell to tell me that they got budgets, and I know they don't have no budgets at all. They have nothing. They just have only implications of saying, yo, listen, I want you to be down with me. But why should I be down with you if my shit is popping? They my won't shit even do the rope. And then they don't even want to sign a contract. Even if you give them the opportunity, nah, they're, some you people know don't even want to sign contracts. Some people, man. they know what it is. You see, when it comes to signing a contract, mm -hmm. you don't have to put it in front of some person to be like, oh, well, sign it, sign it on a rainy day. This is where people mess up. We have to walk up to them from the beginning and be like, look, listen, this is a contract situation. Everything you speak of, you let them know this is a contract situation. I can't really talk to you based on nothing else but that contract. You That's know why? Real. That's what's going to solidify both of us. That's real. That's definitely It's going to get me. It's going to get me. And I think we all make that mistake. At the beginning, where mm -hmm. we worked with artists, me and you, I know we work with artists, you work with, where we be like, damn, and then that person floats off or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I definitely, I get Yeah, I learned my lesson a lot of times, man, because um, I had got called a week before he blew up, a uh, little key, uh, and um, they asked me to do a, like a management situation with his company, and um, I was like, oh man, damn, like who the hell is that? He down with. Young thug, why do they need me? Mm. But I kept forgetting in my head that I'm the nigga, that I'm that nigga, that I'm the sauce, that I'm the sauciest, you know what I mean? I, I forget. So I would get yeah. so many phone calls from so many artists that blew up to this day from Fabio to basically anybody you could think of. And people be like, yo, like why you didn't manage them? I see you around them from the beginning. Not all times you can actually go and try to be your friend's manager. True. It doesn't work. That's true. That's, That's true. my man. You know what I mean? Like, those are my mans. Like, I love them from a distance. I love what they doing. I big up what they doing. I can respect that. But me joining that maybe could have been different. Mm -hmm. So with the success that comes now, it's only you can say, yo, I salute you, baby. I'm still here as the same person. But I'd rather salute you and be praised by what you've done than me actually be like, oh, Damn, you know, I was supposed to be there. Right. I was supposed to. Nah, it's not what I was supposed to do. It was just God's, you know, main choice. Oh, that's a fact. That's definitely a fact. So now, how many, um, who is some of the names, excuse me, that's how many, some of the names that you've had on your show, like big names that have, that you caught at the beginning that are now big at this time or have had, have had success? Uh, Lil TJ, 6 9 China Mac, um, Sosa, Fabio. Lou got cash. Um, who else Ron can I Suno. think of? Ron Suno, Fatboy SSC. Um, the list goes on, bro. Kyle that was Stacks. A, that's so enough was right there. Kyle <laughs> Stacks. Your first actual showcase, like what, what day, what year, like? Oh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, two, 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 two. This is like right after I got into an argument with Six Nine that I started the showcase thing. Like, uh, basically, uh, I got into an argument with him. I told him I didn't want to work with him no more, type shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they was like, they, it wasn't with him. It was basically with like all of us in internal. So I just like stepped to the side, and then uh, I looked 
at what that man had explained to me when I was uh, going through my emails of different contracts that I handled during time of a lot of artists. And um, when I seen just basically like, yo, it just came, it was like, yo, I was reading it out. I said, oh shit, this is what I wanna do. Make these little ones before they get that big, that big in their heads. So they can feel that way, and they're going to know how to be motivated to get on the big stage because they done did my stage, and practice makes perfect. That's real. Mm. That's definitely real. So what year was your first showcase? Like? Tootie's like, you still ain't give me the year, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to know, like, how ago. long you been doing this and, like, you know? Nah, it's been, like, it's been, like, I think two years, right? Like, a, yeah, like yeah. a year, two years, two years. Yeah. Not like a year, wow. but like a year. The anniversary yeah, just passed. Yeah. Remember, March to March. Facts. March to March. It's been like a year. Oh, wow. So it's only been going on a year. Yeah, it's only been going on wow. a year. Wow. And it's that late. Connected. Connected. Because I, when did I call? I came, you had to join, I think, in Queens at Doha. Uh, Doha, 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 Yo, that Rondo, was the, that, was that was the, the first when I first, I uh, come, Avery hit me up. She's like, yo, da 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 da. I know you know Piccolo. You working over there at Sound Plus. I come to the door. I think I told you, Fluff, I don't really know nobody at this time. It's all new. I come to the door. I'm like, Fluff, like, who you? I'm like, I'm one of the judges. He's like, who you? I'm like, oh, A&R, Sound Plus, uh, Sony Records. He's like, who? I say, pick a little name. you like, ah, all right, all right, all right, because I'm about to say niggas could just come to the door and say anything. I'm like, oh, <laughs> who is this dude? He like, ain't nobody just know. coming up in here like that. Yeah, if I didn't say pick a little LT in them name, he look, he like, I would say, all right. I would say from what you said, I would say like I, I feel, because that was the Second month, I started Battle of the Burrows, and I was at your event. So I would say, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we came to the, what was that, the New York Weekend joint, too, the New York Weekend Cafe. That was your oh, yeah, that, was, that, was that was crazy. That was when I first started. So, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 definitely, 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 definitely. I was just like, damn, oh, yo, we got to open back up, man. We got to open back yo, up bad. Man. Like, it was nah, nah, lit. Nah, 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 it, nah, nah, right nah, towards, it was spot. lit. I got a spot. I got a spot. We're about to do a big show. Come and see I, me. I, I, that's why I told you and spend the holler at me to come see me. Yeah, yeah. I need you to take care of that while I take care of the clothes. Nice. Oh, so wait, is that his, coming? His with? um, like his show, like when I went to that <laughs> one, I wanted to find out, like, cause I work with artists too. Like, how can uh -huh. I get them on your stage? That's how you know your shit really is lit. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, really yeah, is yeah, lit. yeah, yeah, definitely, right, definitely, right. definitely. Right. definitely. Right. That's really why really I appreciate lit. people. You know why? Because um, everybody has done something good for me. You know what I mean? Like everybody has looked out for me and worked with me and helped me and built my brand and whoever's did or didn't do it you know like the ones that really did it no matter what even if they did good or bad i still make good on everything you know what i mean like i appreciate everybody who's been there with me throughout this little journey of just basically building this we on tour program that i got going on now nah, that's a fact i don't know how do, how do we meet again dude like out of uh, nowhere the time i remember meeting fluff yeah. It was we was at a concert for Rowdy Rich and my artist at the time I was working with this is when I first first got started. So I ain't know nobody. I was I was Ron J. I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't even Rondo, I was a place That's nothing, facts. okay? Yeah. So we was at we was at Rowdy Rich concert. After I just see this this guy around Rowdy Rich the whole time. So I'm like, hold on. I gotta get around, like I gotta yeah. get my artist to meet Roddy Rich. He, maybe he could be the plug or uh, the outlet <laughs> to do yeah. it. So I go downstairs. He's downstairs walking with Roddy Rich. They close the door. I said, "Oh shit! All right, <laughs> hold on." <laughs> <laughs> so we we go back upstairs. We waiting, waiting. Like nah, it's only one way out. And they guy come upstairs. So we go leave. I'm I'm walking out. Me and my artist at the time, and then out of nowhere, I don't know how, but he's behind me. Fluff is right here behind me. He's like, yo, my name is Fluff. This is I, I, this is what I do. I uh, manage artists. I, I help. I help six nine. Uh, if you need anything, let me know. Yeah. I was like, what? Like, let, let, let me know. Like, yeah. All right, nigga, what's your number? Hold on, what's your number? Oh, <laughs> that's that's old D. I also, I, I also, um, I end up managing um, Skinny from the Nine as well. That's when I, that's mm -hmm. I, that's when yeah. I met you around that time because yeah, he came I, to the event. I, I, Skinny from the Nine, Fresher, you know what I mean? Like, 
I had a lot of the big name artists, you know what I'm saying, under my belt, you know what I mean? And a lot of people didn't understand that. Then when I started working with different managers so they could get better and I could like uh, rate the benefits without me having to be day to day. Because that's big, day to day is like a break process for artists. And a lot of people don't know that that generates basically a lot of money and not a lot for the managers, you know? Mm. So, that's real. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what I mean? You make your cut, but you're making cuts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you got to take it around and take your money and go home with it, it hurts. You ain't lying. Got you. You definitely ain't lying. So now, going forward yeah. with the We On Tour, is there yeah. anything else besides... Oh, I, actually, I had one more question before I even go there. Are there any other partners with you on the We On Tour team, or is it just you? This is something you solely have been doing. Nah, you know what? Everybody's a partner that's been my friend. That's just been, like, basically there for me. From um, basically, you know what I'm saying, Fleet Cavo, Paper Chase, you know what I mean, my son Fleet, Free, uh, Free Him, he locked up, Rondo, Avery, DJ Shadow, DJ Sway King, Kimberly, you got um, Daisy, you can't forget Daisy. You can't right? forget Daisy. I got yeah. the whole team. <laughs> Daisy. Yeah, it's a whole team. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like us, you know, like, it's like all of us, you know what I'm saying? We started that together, like, everybody got their own input and their own way of doing things and they're like it's like we running like right now we fucking up the industry everybody respects us they they all know when they see my shirt or they see my face the merch is everywhere merch right now is it's everywhere everywhere, everywhere. you can't go like anywhere and that's it nah for Especially real Brooklyn. to the Especially point Brooklyn. where if you don't see it on the gram you at least seeing it with somebody in the street on like we on as soon as you see we on tour you it know. won't even be an artist or nothing a nigga just got the shirt on just yo know, fluff Fluff, yo, <laughs> Fluff Jones, like, yo, everybody. And you know what? You know why I smile? Because most of my pieces I sell hand by hand. Mm. I don't, I don't like, do the online store thing, you know what I mean? Like, I have one. I own one. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I have a website. I have everything that I could think of, but it's just like... I get more enjoyment of selling hand to hand. Right, yeah. Grassroots is all like it, it can sell out more different times, but that's the best. That's the best that's feeling when you when that person put that money in. <laughs> 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 so going Shout forward, out seven thirty music. What can we see? What can we look forward to coming from Fluff going forward besides another showcase? Um I got I got different um I got different avenues, man. I see you I running with China avenues. Mac too. Yeah, that's my brother, man. That's my gangster right there. He a good person. You know what I'm saying? Like he uh basically, you know, him, Mikey, you know, my brother from Rumble in the Bronx. Y'all should get him up here, you know what I mean? Interview him. He's a he's a big part of this culture right now that's moving forward, you know what I'm saying? Like that's all I'm gonna be a part of, you know what I mean? Like what's moving forward, not what was back then. Right. You know what I mean? That's what's up, man. I think um, what you're doing is amazing for artists, especially independent artists. You know what I mean? Facts, so, what you're doing for the community. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah, a, lot of, it's a lot of giving back that, that you're doing that, you know, a lot of people don't, don't say or don't do is, you know, give you your roses while you're still here, you know? Mm, when I say fire. we appreciate you, you know what I mean. Fire. Yeah, a lot of people appreciate you. That post that you that you that somebody hacked your Instagram and it was like something uh, crazy. Oh, so crying. many so many people post, was hitting me post, up. Had yeah, it's like that you post, got so much post, love, bro. Yeah, listen, so that much that love. Post, that post really hit a lot of people. A lot of people said they stopped their cars and they stopped their moments in life. And it was like, nah, this can't be true. And thank yeah, God it's not true. I'm here. It. I'm here, I'm here. That's a fact. That's a I'm fact. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here for everybody, bro. Give you, you a rose <laughs> while you're here. We appreciate nah, nah, you. I couldn't you believe listen. it. I ain't believe it was real, to be honest. Ah, yo, I appreciate you. Bro. No, for real. Like, I just nah. couldn't believe it. Yo, listen, I appreciate you on my heart. You know why? Because at the end of the day, like I said, you know, like I ain't trying to. I'm trying to just be the better me. And I'm just trying to be me. I'm trying to be a good manager to my artists that I have now, which I want to work with to the day I die. You understand what I'm saying? And then, um, like, basically, you know, my outside influencers that I, you know, I work with, you know, from comedians to basically, I just want to bring this shit to another level. Like, I really want this to be worldwide. We on tour. I, I think you're getting there. It. Yeah, it's yeah, getting there. It <laughs> they, said, they said my shit moving faster than slow bucks. <laughs> it's uh, getting there. It's moving. Uh, 
Right. Moving. So I'm talking about, definitely, you definitely hear Fluff. I'm, I'm trying to fuck up the game. I'm trying to be the next motherfucking Levi's. You uh, shit me? You're going to see me everywhere, nigga, for centuries. Fuck all that other brands. All them other brands been around, but you ain't going to never forget Levi's. Levi's is gonna be forever. Never. Levi's is forever. Forever. We on tour forever. forever. <laughs> we on tour forever. Facts. That's Yo, what I want to do. I want to thank you, man, for coming through. Yeah. Um, I want everybody. If you don't know, go follow. Uh, shout out your IG. Yeah, my shit, Fluff Jones TV. You oh know yeah, that's man? what I wanted to ask too, but we about to end it. Yeah, like, real where quick. the TV come from? Where the TV come from? Fluff Jones TV. Uh, because you know what, my name was Fluff Jones. And then uh, basically when I just started working with like uh, Takashi and saying Skinny from the Nine and other artists that I wanted to let go, I wanted to rest in peace to that name, but I really wanted to keep it, so I just added TV. <laughs> yeah, we're going movie. It's a movie. <laughs> you here, man. That's a fact. We're On the Come Up Radio Show, you already know the vibes. Music. Thank you, Fluff, once again. Yeah. Uh, Chris Robinson, 20 on the gram. Rondo, go ahead, my fault, brother. Flex Rondo. To your CEO on the gram. And we're going to end it off with a song by Live Like Davis, Princessa. We out of here. Yo, bro, these niggas hit right now. In the pool. No. No. Where these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool. I'm over Casa Ezu. Casa Ezu. My princessa. She get wetter, fuck me better Why these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool I'm off a cause and zoo, cause and zoo My princess, I, she get wetter, fuck me better I'm in the section, standing on couches Pull a chop on my end, we in houses Gang on, pull up inside of the party Get all little weddies, we out this How you? Spending your check on a chain, ain't investing no houses. I know killers that's putting in pain. Use my voice as they outlet. Yeah. CC, she went a couple of zoos. Hey. Freaky, she getting wet in the pool. Hey. If it don't last, at least we did it. Hey. 1 800, can I hit? Where these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool. I'm off a Casa Azul. Casa Azul. My princess, I, she get wet. Fuck me better Why these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool I'm off a Casa Ezu Casa Ezu My princess, I, she get wetter Fuck me better yeah. Shake it, don't break it Ay. Shake it, don't break it Ay. Wanna see you act out and get tree I hit call it and I'ma hit Lily Pussy like Pasta Linguini Wanna see you get wet Why these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool I'm off a Casa Ezu Casa Ezu My princess, I, she get wetter Fuck me better Why these they jumping inside of the pool? In the pool I'm off a Casa Ezu Casa Ezu My princess, I, she get wetter Fuck me better